Hello and welcome to Heartlight Vedic Astrology. Um, in this video I was going to talk about the concept of planetary war or Graha Yuda as it's uh, called in Sanskrit um, from the perspective of Vedic Astrology or Jyotish. So planetary war or Graha Yuda, so what is it? Uh, what is this concept? Um, in uh, Vedic astrology, what does it mean? How do we use it? Um, what does it indicate? So, from a technical perspective, what a uh, planetary war Graha Yuda is is when two true planets are within one degree of each other. And so, let's define true planets here. The true planets um, of the nine planets that are used in classical um, Vedic astrology are Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Sun is a star, Moon is a moon, Rahu and Ketu are actually calculations, they're not actual physical planets. So these five planets are considered the true planets. So when you get um, two of these planets, or you can get more than two, two of these you know, in a, in a single degree, but at least two of these planets within one degree of each other, that's what causes this phenomenon or concept of planetary role or Graha Yuda. From a functional perspective, what this means is that you know these energies are competing with each other, at war with each other. The energies, the things that these planets symbolize, are, are in conflict, um, and there will be some fallout from it, whether it's large or small, short term or long term. You know that depends on the planets and how they're conditioned and the strength of them, that sort of thing. So in this phenomenon, we do actually consider um, somebody to be a winner and somebody to be a loser. And the way that you determine whether um, a planet is a winner in this situation are basically two ways of doing that. One is that you determine which planet is the brightest. And among these five planets, Venus tends to be the brightest um, planet. So Venus often wins uh, in wars, planetary wars. The other thing is that you can consider what is the planet that's got the highest longitude or position in the sky. That can also be a way of determining the winner. So what happens with these two planets, again we're just considering two planets right now, but you could have you know more than two of these true planets in the same degree. That would be quite a phenomenon actually. Um, so what happens with the planet that wins the war is that they do, you know, they're allowed to kind of raise the victory flag and that sort of thing. They are considered to gain a secondary strength. So they get a little, they're considered to be a little bit strong. Not a lot, though. The planet that loses, though, is considered to get a primary weakness. Like, they're just gutted out. They've lost, you know, the, the war, the battle. And so typically, when that happens, there's a lot of physical loss, but also sort of like moral, you know, spiritual uh, mental, you know, emotional loss as well. So the loser is considered a gain, you know, gain if you want to consider it that way, a primary weakness. So the thing though, um, since it is a war, even if you have a winner, both of these planets end up getting scathed and, and damaged and beat up. So both of these planets and the things that they represent become unstable. Um, so this month that I'm recording this happens to be March 2023 and um, we actually have three planetary wars going on this month. So last week we had two and they happened to be not in the same degree but we had two planetary wars happening at about the same time um, in different areas of the sky so that was quite something and then we're gonna have another one at the end of the month. So let me just talk about those three planetary wars so you, at least you have some concrete examples of how we might, you know, interpret this energy if we were looking at a birth chart or something like that. So last week we had two planetary wars. One was between Venus and Jupiter, and the other was between Mercury and Saturn. So Venus and Jupiter, Venus represents things like love and sociability and um, charm, the arts. Um, you know, it's a warm, fuzzy planet, <laughs> basically. Um, it can also represent things like um, spouse or a loved one. Um, it can also represent things like uh, Venus is also considered the mundane counselor, so the uh, like somebody who um, gives advice in mundane, worldly matters. 
Jiva, on the other hand, what Jiva represents are things like the guru or teacher. It can represent children. It can represent spirituality. Um, it can represent law, uh, politics, justice, um, things like that, philosophy. So, um, and Jupiter is considered to be the spiritual counselor. If Venus is the mundane counselor, Jupiter is the spiritual counselor. So, um, these two planets were at war. They happen to both be what we consider natural benefics, so they both give, you know, good energy. Um, you know, they shine good energy wherever they go. And it happened to be that this war between them was happening in Pisces, which is ruled by Jupiter, which made Jupiter particularly strong. The other thing is Venus happens to be exalted in Pisces, so Venus was also very strong. So you have these two benefics that are very strong in war. So you can imagine that, you know, it's not really a war, per <laughs> se. It's more of a pillow fight. Um, Probably there's not going to be major fallout from this. It's going to blow over pretty quickly. Um, it's just going to be a minor scuffle. And one example that I have, um, you know, that somebody shared with me last week, um, not that they knew that this planetary war was going on, but in my mind, <laughs> this is an example of the planetary war, was um, somebody I know um, took their child to get their hair cut. And um, the child was upset because they didn't like the way their hair cut came out or something like that. So they were kind of you know, moody and threw a little tantrum, but they were fine the next day. So again, Jupiter can represent children. Venus can represent the arts or artists. And so there was a little bit of a scuffle between the hairdresser and the child. But again, was it really a big deal? Not really. I mean, it blew over. The child was okay the next morning. The hair's going to grow back. Like, you know, just kind of a minor thing, like sort of, you know, in a way a little bit silly. Maybe not for the child at the time. But, um, you know, that's like sort of like a one example of Venus um, in battle with Jupiter um, in Pisces. Like, it's kind of like like a non-war war. In that case. So at, at about the same time, though, we had a war between Mercury and Saturn. Now, this is a different story because uh, Mercury and Saturn were in the same degree. The sun was actually close by. Um, which actually put these two planets in combustion, which is a whole other concept. But so basically, you had Sun, Mercury, and Saturn in the same sign, very close to each other, and it happened to be Aquarius, which is ruled by Saturn. Because Saturn was in its own sign, Saturn was particularly strong. And Saturn can indicate things like slowness, delays, bureaucracy, uh, servants, um, you know, not, you know, how would I say, kind of nice people or like kind of um, perhaps lower class people or older people or um, shady people, you know, because um, Saturn's considered to be the great malefic. Um, the sun was there. Um, the sun represents things like um, boss, authority, um, career, that sort of thing. And Mercury represents um, rational thought, decision making. It could re represent people like um, aunts and uncles, friends, business um, associates, like um, co-workers or clients, that sort of thing. Um, so all of this was happening in Aquarius, which is an air sign. Air signs tend to, um, you know, re represent the ideal world because um, air is like kind of thoughts and ideas and stuff like that. Um, the other thing about Mercury is that Mercury can swing um, depending on who, what other planets it's associated with. So if Mercury was with Venus and Jupiter, it would become a natural benefic. The thing though in this case, Mercury was at Saturn and Sun, which are both malefics. So Mercury in this case was a malefic. So you have three malefics, Sun, Saturn, and Mercury. Um, so I could see where if you put these energies together, there's going to be some sort of philosophical disagreement, probably involving boss or co-workers potentially. Um, but the thing is, Saturn also represents like long developments um, because Saturn's the slowest moving planet and Saturn takes 29 years to go around the whole sky, like do a full 360 around the sky. So whatever happened with this thing, um, is going to be a long-term effect. Um, so it could be something like, <clears throat> again, a, a, you know, a disagreement 
um, that happened that actually, um, and because Mercury and Saturn were combust, again, I don't want to get too much into that in this, in this talk, but when planets go combust, their qualities are more internally um, shown or manifested rather than externally. So if there was like bureaucracy, you know, from Saturn battling Mercury, a coworker, um, there might be some sort of um, tussle um, with like, you know, maybe a coworker you thought was a friend and, you know, you find out that they kind of pushed themselves ahead and left you behind or something like that. And although you may not on the surface lose this person, like they may not transfer to another department and you might have to still work side by side with them, internally you might have lost a lot of trust because Saturn, Saturn you know, again, Mercury represents the rational mind and the analytical mind um, and, and friends um, and Saturn represents things like skepticism, doubts, anxiety, depression, that sort of thing. Um, so you might have lost trust with somebody like that. You know, if we were looking at something not sort of person, like a human, you know, um, uh, more um, in, inanimate, you know, version of this, Saturn can represent structure, Mercury can represent business, Sun can represent profession and um, um, kind of career, that sort of thing. So it might have been if you have your own business, there was some decision that was made about um, maybe some part of the business to let go of so that you can move forward in a new direction um, or some restructuring of that business that would better serve the long-term um, direction of that business. That's another possibility. If we were talking about medical things, um, what's interesting is sun represents the central nervous system, like the brain, the spinal cord. Uh, Mercury represents the peripheral nervous system as well as the lungs and the skin um, and, uh, and the arms and that sort of thing. And then Saturn represents things like um, the neuromuscular system. So it could have been that somebody had a flare up with some sort of like almost paralysis or um, nervous system disorder. Um, I actually happen to have a patient who came in who really exemplified this. Actually, she has spinal degeneration and uh, fusion going on, and she's had several surgeries. And because of the surgeries and the fusion, like she has peripheral nerve damage, and she came in complaining of, you know, one fatigue because of all this going on, but also. Um, sensation she's feeling on her skin where she feels like there's something sticky on her skin um so again that's you know her sensory sensory perception is is um is getting affected by her conditions um and again there's a structural problem because she's had surgeries in the spine the spine is represented by um, the sun so you know there are different ways that you can um see how these planets uh, play out in terms of when a war is going on. Um, and then we have another um, planetary war coming up at the end of the month. So I've already mentioned Mercury a little bit, and I've also mentioned Jupiter a little bit. The thing is that in this third case, Mercury is now going to be benefic because it's with Jupiter in its own sign. It's going to be in Pisces. So you have Mercury as a natural benefic with Jupiter, which is always a natural benefic. Mercury represents things like... <clears throat> communication, travel, um, thoughts, ideas, rational thought, decision making, that sort of thing. And Jupiter represents things like spirituality and oration, actually speaking, uh, law, politics, philosophy. So I can imagine that, you know, coming up at the end of the month for many people, they might feel like there's, um, you know, kind of a little bit of a war in terms of like, uh, maybe changing their mind about spirituality, uh, making a different decision about spirituality, that sort of thing. Um, Jupiter's going to be in a strong position. Mercury's actually um, debilitated in Pisces. So, um, you know, I think Jupiter's going to win the battle here. Mercury can also um, indicate rational or analytical thought, while Jupiter indicates, like, um, intuition. So it might be that, you know, some strong intuition comes in and kind of dismantles some thought process that you've been working off of. Um, in terms of people, this could be, again, um, Mercury can represent the student, Jupiter can represent the teacher, so it might be a teacher-student conflict. Um, it could also be like a, you know, Mercury can be aunts and uncles, uh, Jupiter can be children, so maybe 
um, there's a con like your aunt or uncle is having some sort of issue with um, a child. Um, again, this last war here, Mercury and Jupiter, whatever comes out of it is actually probably is going to be for the best. Um, because again, you're, this is two benefics working here. And actually, even the Mercury-Saturn uh, planetary war that I was talking about, um, it might be in the moment kind of a nasty flare-up. Um, but the thing is, because Saturn is in its own sign, um, whatever structural change happens, whatever direction is taken for the long term is actually going to ultimately be for the good. Um, for the best. So, um, Mercury uh, versus Jupiter at the end, whatever comes out of, like, it might be a war of war words or thoughts, you know, philosophies or whatever, whatever is sort of hashed out, um, you know, through the Mercury Jupiter war at the end of the month is again going to be of benefit, and there, may, there probably won't be much fallout from it, um, even if there's a tense moment. All right, so there you go. Um, that's what the planetary war is, Graha Yuda, and some examples of how it can show up. Um, so that whenever you hear, you know, somebody talk about planetary war, or like, uh, the reason why I'm putting this talk together is because um, when I do my longer videos, like the monthly transit videos, I think I was combining too much of the interpretation of events with a teaching. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of separate the teaching moments from. Um, the interpretation um, just to make it kind of smoother and um, shorter and probably more digestible. I was probably trying to um, put too much in at one time. <laughs> um, so in any case, uh, now you know more about Graha Yuda. Uh, so that's it for today. Um, I hope that this clarified the concept of planetary war and Graha Yuda for you as far as uh, uh, Vedic astrology, Jyotish is concerned. I thank you for your time, and again, I always hope that my videos on astrology help you navigate um, your life in the best possible way. So, take care, and until the next one, Namaste.